Now, we know the most important thing in the NFL at both the beginning and end of the day is getting the win. No matter what it takes to get there, no matter how you have to obtain it, if you can come out of the game with a win, then, yeah, that's a good thing. Uh, and I always say, and I've said it for years, that I'll take an ugly win, the ugliest of the ugliest wins, over a pretty loss any day of the week. If the numbers got to be ugly, the stats ain't got to be so beautiful, but the Ravens come out with the dub, hey, I I'm with it all day. Because I would much rather that than, oh, the, the passing numbers be great, the running numbers be great, the defense get all these sacks, and all, but they come away with a loss. Because all of that would end up being for nothing. So the Baltimore Ravens, uh, something that's extremely scary, like just the most frightening thing about this football team right now is that they are 7-2. and two. They have won seven games, only lost two. And if you talk to a lot of people, they can say, hey, the, the teams at the Baltimore Ravens that they lost to, they didn't even beat the Ravens, but the Ravens, they beat themselves. They were their own worst enemy in those games. But regardless, they, they, they lost them. But one of the most frightening things about this team is that specifically on offense, they haven't even hit their stride. They're, they're, they're not even at full strength. They have not been rolling yet. And they're sitting at 7-2 and two right now. And when you just look at, I, I know it's been highlighted a lot of times, oh, the Ravens against the last two top, two of the top NFC teams, they outscored them 75-9. to nine. Now, I know we said we're going to focus on the offense, but you got to give the defense credit for sure. Because to hold a team, one team to three points, uh, three points in four quarters, that's crazy, especially in this day and age of the NFL. And uh, another top NFC team, the, the Lions, to hold them to six, that is pure insanity. But just to flip it back to the Baltimore Ravens offense, specifically in this Seahawks game that we just watched the other day, this Ravens offense, I, I, I don't know if we watched the same game, and I don't know if we had the same viewpoint on it, but th this is just my opinion. But I did not feel like the Baltimore Ravens offense that we saw was rolling. I didn't. And I get it. I know they scored, well, with Lamar Jackson, they scored 30 points. With Tyler Huntley, he came in and scored seven. But... I did not feel that like that offense was as powerful as they can possibly be, especially with the passing game. Because the, the passing game, that they, they left a lot out there on the field. I know Lamar Jackson was trying to hit Rashad Bateman on a deep ball a couple of times. It just it, it didn't work itself out. And they had missed a couple of opportunities here and there. But I just do not feel like this Baltimore Ravens offense, they did everything that they could possibly do. But that's the scary thing about that because – they still put up 37 points. They still put up 37 points. In that game against the Seahawks, a lot of people, Zay Flowers, one catch for 11 yards. A lot of people are like, whoa, whoa, where's, Zay, where's Zay Flowers at? Why Zay Flowers ain't getting involved? Zay Flowers had that one target. He had a catch, got the first down, even shook with a spoon, uh, Seahawks rookie. They, they got, he got him nasty. It was, it was great. But he only had, had one catch for 11 yards. One target, that's it. But, the Ravens scored 37 points with Zay Flowers not even involved in the game. And they scored 37 points. Lamar Jackson, he went, I think, what, 21 for 26, threw like a, a, a hundred some yards. How many touchdowns did Lamar Jackson throw in that game against the Seahawks? Zero. He even had the turnover. I don't know if that was on Lamar Jackson or Justice Hill, but that's beside the point right now. But he even had the turnover. Threw no touchdowns. Didn't throw any picks. So, thank goodness. But didn't throw for any touchdowns. So, you would think, oh, man, Lamar Jackson, he ain't throw for no touchdowns in the Ravens. Oh, that's probably a nail-biter, huh? 37 points. And while he was playing, 30 points. And he did not throw a single touchdown. Think about that. Like, seriously, think about that. He ain't throw a single one. And they still put up 30 seven points that's that's insanity man we go back the week before against the cardinals and i think it's important that we do not forget about this game because i know a lot of nfl analysts and whatnot they tend to skip over this game especially in recent comments about the ravens when they want to give praise to the ravens and hey it's cool but i can't let y'all forget about this game because this is something important to remember when it comes to the baltimore ravens they do not care and i keep saying this they do not care what your record is we saw the Seahawks came in hot. They blew them out. The Lions came in hot. They blew them out. The Cardinals came in sorry. The Cardinals are a bad team. The Ravens struggled. They got the win now. 
But the Ravens struggled. And the Cardinals, they had an opportunity to tie it up at the end of the game. And they, they did not convert their second onside kick because they certainly got the first. But they didn't get the second onside kick that they could have put themselves in position to get a game tying touchdown. So the Baltimore Ravens, they dominated these good teams recently, dominated these great teams recently. But against a bad team, they struggled. They got the win, and again, that's all that matters at the end of the day. But they struggled. The Pittsburgh Steelers, the loss against them, that was a struggling Pittsburgh Steelers team. And we know they're doing better now. But that was a struggling Pittsburgh Steelers team. The Ravens lost. The Colts, the Colts had just lost their starting quarterback for the year. He was done. Anthony Richardson, that was a wrap for him. Going against a backup Gardner Minshew, and we know he got starting experience, but still, he's a backup. The Colts decided, no, no, we're not going with Minshew. We're going to go with the rookie, Anthony Richardson. The Baltimore Ravens, they lost. So while this Baltimore Ravens team, it, it, it is scary, like you said, frightening that they are 7-2, and two, and they haven't even hit their stride yet on offense. The defense has been doing an amazing job, but the offense has been up and down. So that, that's something that's scary in a great way. But something that's scary in a not so great way is how they operate against bad teams. So with these Baltimore Ravens, your record is who you are. You've won seven games and you've only lost two. And that's amazing. But we still want to see the Baltimore Ravens do much better against much worse teams. I think that's extremely important moving forward. But also... Once this offense really gets rolling, once the passing game picks up, because, again, another thing that's scary in a good way for the Baltimore Ravens, we talked about how we feel like the offense is still, they're leaving a lot out there. They've just, again, Zay Flowers wasn't even involved in the game against the Seahawks. He wasn't hardly involved. I guess he was just like a decoy out there the whole game. But, so with him, one of their main weapons, one of their main targets, not hardly being involved at all in that game yesterday, they still put up 37 points. But then... They added another weapon to their arsenal. Somebody who uh, we knew the potential was there, but we just hadn't had, had an opportunity to see that potential reached or had that potential pulled out of them. But in that game against the Seahawks, Keaton Mitchell. Now Keaton Mitchell is a part of what the Baltimore Ravens do. Now Keaton Mitchell is a part of this Baltimore Ravens offense, and he will be a part of this Baltimore Ravens offense. So it's like the Baltimore Ravens, it's, 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 fright. it's got to be frightening for other teams too because it's like, man, this team was already a strong team and they're not even clicking yet on offense all the way. Like we hoped that they would be by now. Like we, we figured they would be by now. But they're still putting up points. They still like even, we, we can go to, to, to previous games too because we, we talked about obviously the Seahawks game the other day they put up 37 Cardinals game, they put up 31. The Lions game, they put up 38. And this was a team that they had, they had this record. They hadn't scored over 27, 28 points in over a year. I'm thinking, like, what? Really? What? Huh? Yeah. But they, of course, blew that out the water recently. But um, against the, the Titans in that game, offense was a little shaky. They were shaky that game, too. They put up 24 points. Put up 24 points. Now, against the Steelers, they only put up 10 points, but they had more points than just the 10. They had it in their hands, but they literally dropped it. They dropped it. So many drops. So many points left out there on the field. Uh, now, against the, the, the Browns, and that's, that's something to think about, too. They went against the Browns, and Browns back then, I'm not sure what they are right now, but the Browns had the number one defense. They were going crazy. The number one defense back then. Ravens put up 28 points. On the Browns' number one defense. And Ravens were not even at full strength yet, man. They put up 28 points. Lamar, Jack, Lamar Jackson th threw for two touchdowns, and I believe that's the game where he ran for two touchdowns as well. He had a double whammy. So with that being said, that like this team, they the potential for them to be great. And I mean, you want to call them great now, that's fine. But I just think they're really good. I don't think they're great yet. They still got some more to prove, but they're, they're really, 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 really good. Um, but the potential for them to be great, it's there. It, it's right there. But 
they just got to show it. They, they just got to establish this level of consistency, especially against bad teams. That's where, in my opinion, where I think we really want to see it against the teams that aren't doing so good, against the teams that aren't so strong, because they've shown this year that they str- they'll struggle with them. They- they'll struggle with them. Again, we look at the, the Colts game. They lost 22-19. to uh, The Steelers game, they lost 17-10. to uh, And then the Cardinals game, they won, but it was 31-24. So they-, they-, they struggled against bad teams. And you got to be better than that. So let's see what these Baltimore Ravens do. Let, let, let's see what, what, the, what their future uh, holds for them uh, and holds for us as Ravens fans too because you know we're part of it too. But they have everything that they need uh, and more to get the job done, to, to end up winning the Super Bowl, to really be a, a true contending team. But it's just a matter of them putting it all together. But like just thinking about it though, really thinking about it, thinking about how they're not even at full strength yet. They're still missing a lot of people, too. They still got some more people that they can get back. But they're not even at full strength yet. Um, the offensive line, <laughs> they certainly got some issues. I know Ronnie Stanley is, I don't know what's been going on with him. But, again, the Ravens still winning. They didn't even have their starting right tackle in the game against the Seahawks the other day. Ravens still winning. Gus Edwards only carried the ball five times the other day. But I guess Keith Mitchell was like, hey, look, Gus, I- I'll get the yards for both you and me. They, they still winning. So the fact that Ravens are, are still winning despite so much says a lot about that team. Now, something that could say a lot about you is how you look when you go out, especially now I know it's getting a little cold, especially up there up north. So if you want your own varsity jacket, you can go to standwithusclothing.com, and to get 10% off, you can use code engraving. So team, keep it clean. Go check them out. Uh, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And let's hope that these Ravens, Once they really get rolling, they get rolling at the right time, and then they roll all the way through the rest of the season, all the way through the playoffs, and then, of course, all the way through the Super Bowl.